Now, within this sympathomimetic drugs, now let me discuss about the directly acting sympathomimetic drugs. Right, now let me discuss about the directly acting sympathomimetics. Now if you see this directly acting sympathomimetic drugs, these drugs, I said you that we are of having two types. One is catecholamines and the other one is non-catecholamines. Right, so we have catecholamines and then non-catecholamines. Right? We are having catecholamines and as well as non-catecholamines. You take the catecholamines. The catecholamines, they contain dihydroxybenzene nucleus. Right? Catecholamines are the one. They contain dihydroxy benzene nucleus okay so that is about your catecholamines which contain dihydroxy benzene nucleus now now you take these catecholamines like how did we classify these catecholamines again catecholamines again we have classified them into the endogenous catecholamines and as well as the exogenous catecholamines so you take this endogenous catecholamines the endogenous catecholamines like what i have discussed is the endogenous they are adrenaline then we have noradrenaline then we have dopamine right then we have dopamine so adrenaline noradrenaline and dopamine these are the endogenous catecholamines whereas you take the synthetic catecholamines or the exogenous catecholamines the exogenous catecholamines right they include we have what is called as isoprenaline right we have what is called isoprenaline then you have dobutamine then we have dopexamine right then we have dopexamine and next like we have phenyldopam right phenyldopam so all these are all what exogenous or synthetic catecholamines right exogenous or synthetic catecholamines right next what we have is the non catecholamines you take the non catecholamines the non catecholamines they act as the selective agonists right these non catecholamines they act as selective agonists right selective agonists on which all receptors it they act on alpha 1 receptors they act on alpha 2 receptors and along with that they also act on beta 1 receptors and as well as beta 2 receptors all right that is about the action of the non catecholamines now you take this particular catecholamines right catecholamines like we have two types now one is endogenous and as well as exogenous catecholamines now among these you take the endogenous catecholamines that is adrenaline noradrenaline and dopamine they are very high potency compounds right so these drugs they are having right these drugs they are having high potency and the other thing is they have very short half life right high potency with short T half right with short T half now why do you think they have very short T half 
right why they have very short half life because they have very short half life because due to rapid inactivation of this adrenaline noradrenaline and dopamine by mono amino oxidase and as well as catechol o methyl transferase enzymes right they have short half life due to rapid inactivation right rapid inactivation by mao that is mono amino oxidase and rapid inactivation by comt that is catechol o methyl transferase enzyme now a point that you should remember is this adrenaline noradrenaline and as well as dopamine they are polar because they are polar in nature these drugs they have a poor penetration in the central nervous system right being the polar compounds they have poor cns penetration right they have poor cns penetration remember this point next now these drugs that is adrenaline noradrenaline they are, and dopamine they are never given oral right the effect whenever you give them orally is nil okay so these drugs they are never given orally let me tell you why right why if they are given orally why they don't have the effect why because within the intestines we have these two enzymes right within the intestines we have mono amino oxidase and as well as catechol o methyl transferase so within the intestine itself whenever you take the drug orally they get metabolized right so in the intestines they get metabolized by your mao right by your mao and as well as comt okay so by mono amino oxidase and as well as comt they get metabolized within the intestines that is the reason why they are never given orally and not only that right not only that within the liver right within the liver you have an enzyme which is called mono amino oxidase so the mono amino oxidase which is present within the liver that is released into the intestine and there within the intestine it will be metabolized so their action will not be there whenever they are given orally remember this point so metabolism in the intestine by mono amino oxidase and catechol o methyl transferase and liver by mono amino oxidase will limit their oral use right will limit their oral use right now now let me tell you about the actions of the endogenous and as well as exogenous catecholamines on various receptors and what will be the effect of these drugs on the heart rate and as well as the blood pressure of the individual now first you take this particular adrenaline so if you take this particular adrenaline remember the adrenaline it acts on the following receptors it acts on alpha 1 alpha 2 beta 1 and beta 2 receptors right so what you have to remember is they act on alpha 1 alpha 2 receptors beta 1 and as well as the beta 2 receptors right that is one point what you should remember whereas you take the noradrenaline noradrenaline it has little poor beta 2 action right beta 2 activity by noradrenaline is little poor so now where does this particular noradrenaline act this particular noradrenaline it acts on alpha 1 alpha 2 and as well as the beta 1 receptors right and what you should remember is noradrenaline has poor beta 2 action right poor beta 2 action all right next you take this isoprenaline right this is another very important exogenous drug where the actions are very much required if you take this isoprenaline isoprenaline it is having very little alpha activity right it possesses very little alpha activity the major action of the isoprenaline is on the beta 1 and beta 2 only 
okay so what you should remember is this isoprenalin it has very little alpha action so it only acts on beta 1 and beta 2 receptors right it acts only on the beta 1 and as well as beta 2 receptors that is isoprenalin right let me shortly revise whatever I have said. I am discussing about the directly acting sympathomimetics which includes catecholamines and non-catecholamines. The catecholamines they contain dihydroxybenzene nucleus. Catecholamines again we have two types endogenous and exogenous catecholamines. Exogenous catecholamines they are also called synthetic catecholamines. The endogenous catecholamines are adrenaline, noradrenaline and dopamine. Exogenous are isoprenaline, dobutamine, dopexamine and as well as phenyldopan. And you take this particular, the catecholamines, for point what you should remember is the endogenous catecholamines, they have very high potency, but half-life is very short T half. Why do you think they have very short T half is? Because they get rapidly inactivated by monoamino oxidase and as well as catechol or methyl transferase. So that is the reason why they have very short T half. Next, these are the polar compounds, so that is why they have very poor CNS penetration. And they are never given orally. Why? Because those drugs they get metabolized within the intestines by MAO and as well as COMT. And within the liver we also have monoamino oxidase which will metabolize the, those drugs within the intestines. And you take this particular action on the various receptors. You take adrenaline it acts on alpha 1, alpha 2, beta 1 and beta 2 receptors. You take noradrenaline it has very poor beta 2 action. So predominantly noradrenaline it acts on alpha 1, alpha 2 and as well as beta 1 action but very poor beta 2 action. Next, you take this isoprenaline. Isoprenaline it has very little alpha action. Predominantly it only acts on beta 1 and as well as the beta 2 receptors. And you take non-catecholamines, they are selective agonists. That is they act on either alpha 1 or alpha 2 or beta 1 or beta 2 receptors.